Quo, and welcome to Midweek Connection on Thursday, September 29th. I'm Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie. And we're here to do what we ordinarily do on Wednesdays, but today is Thursday. We just didn't have time to do one yesterday, but we are going to read through our daily lectionary texts for today and have a discussion about it. So let me go ahead and open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this day and the chance to read your word. I pray, Lord, that that, uh, that you would speak to us today and that your words would sink deeply into our hearts and our minds, that we would be transformed more and more into the image of your son, Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we pray, amen. amen. All right, well, today we're gonna to start with Psalm 116. I gotta turn back a page, there we go. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he strengthened the, strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command in the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before this cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Our Hebrew scripture reading is from Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. Hear the word of the Lord, O people of Israel, for the Lord has an indictment against the inhabitants of the land. There is no faithfulness or loyalty and no knowledge of God in the land. Swearing, lying, and murder, and stealing and adultery break out. Bloodshed follows bloodshed. Therefore the land mourns, and all who live in it languish, together with the wild animals and the birds of the air, even the fish of the sea are perishing. Yet let no one contend, and let none accuse, for with you is my contention, O priest. You shall stumble by day, the prophet also shall stumble with you by night, and I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. The more they increased, the more they sinned against me. They changed their glory into shame. They feed on the sin of my people. They are greedy for their iniquity. And it shall be like people, like priests. I will punish them for their ways and repay them for their deeds. They shall eat, but not be satisfied. They shall play the whore, but not multiply, because they have forsaken the Lord to devote themselves to whoredom.
and we'll read from Acts chapter 21, verses 27 through 36. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia who had seen him in the temple stirred up the whole crowd. They seized him, shouting, Fellow Israelites, help! This is the man who is teaching everyone everywhere against our people, our law, and this place. More than that, he has actually brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place, for they had previously seen Trophimus, the Ephesian, with him in the city, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was aroused, and the people rushed together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and immediately the doors were shut. While they were trying to kill him, word came to the tribune from the cohort that all of Jerusalem was in an uproar. Immediately he took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. When they saw the tribune and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. When the tribune came, arrested him, and ordered him to be bound with two chains, he inquired who he was and what he had done. Some in the crowd shouted one thing, some another, and as he could not learn the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. When Paul came to the steps, the violence of the mob was so great that he had to be carried by the soldiers. The crowd that followed kept shouting, away with him. And our gospel text today is from Luke chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched Jesus to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though he knew what they were thinking, he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come and stand here. He got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at all of them, Jesus said to them, said to him, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and disgust with one another what they might do to Jesus. And our psalm is Psalm 26. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with the hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all of your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with the sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty, those in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground in the great congregation. I will bless the Lord. And our final psalm today is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. This is the word of the Lord. Lord Thanks be to God. God. Hmm. I don't know, Natalie. Where do you uh, where do you think the Lord is 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 leading with these texts today? 
I find it interesting that throughout, um, it, it seems like you have the Pharisees trying to condemn and they're just, they're waiting in it. And it says, you know, they're looking for something that they can um, catch him on. And even in the Acts passage there, um, when they are, you know, he brought Greeks into the temple. I mean, how dare him? And he's defiled it. And, and, and even in, in the Hosea passage, there's this, the land has been indicted and they have forsaken. And I, I look at all of these things in this human realm and, and as humans, we're looking and we're trying to condemn, we're trying to, um, they were trying to catch them doing wrong. But when you look at God and that very last line that you just read in Psalm 130, what a great way to end when you've t looked at those scriptures it is he who will redeem Israel. Mm. And from all humanity, that's in right. Place. And you have humanity trying to condemn all the way throughout. And and yes, the Old Testament with Hosea and, and God, you know, you've forsaken God and you will be punished. And I don't know what to do with that, but <laughs> you <laughs> right. can answer that in a right. moment. But um, when you look at the Acts passage and you look at the the, the Luke passage, I think that you see the stark contrast between humanity and um, the holiness and the grace of God mm -hmm. and what he offers that humanity can't. Right. Um, humanity is, like I said, it's they are seeking out something wrong right. to call people and to, to hold their feet to the fire and, and to say, you know, you've done this wrong and, and you'll be punished. Right. And then you have God who will redeem of all the iniquities. Mm -hmm. And so I just found that interesting. Yeah. You read that and that stuck out to me. That was just today that, I don't know, that struck me. Well, so. I, I really like that. And I appreciate you even taking the lead on that because I think that is, I think that's precisely the point that God is in the process of redeeming a broken humanity. Right. And how frequently, it, uh, just as you said, that humans are always looking for ways to condemn others uh, or to, I, I, might, I might even want to say it more along the lines of wanting to make themselves appear more righteous because of the sins of other people. That this whole idea that in the, in the Luke passage where um, here is Jesus, the creator of the universe walking with his disciples and they get indignant that they're plucking some grain on the field on the Sabbath and Jesus has to remind them of a place in their own scriptures in our own scriptures where right. David and his men were hungry and they ate the bread of the presence in the most holy of places because all of the ceremony, all of the uh, sanctuary, all of the religious symbolism is all meant to be for us, yeah. not against us. And right. Jesus, when he says, the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath, um, why, why was the Sabbath created? Was it created to make you miserable? Was right. it created to set up a hierarchy of faithfulness? I do these things, look how good I am. You right. do those things, look how bad you are. And Jesus is like, it's not about that at all. It's right. if people are hungry, they should eat. If people are hurting, they, they should, should be, be cared for. They should be healed. Right. Uh, right. Why should he have to continue to suffer? Well, it's the Sabbath. Sorry, not your day today. Not your day today. The very yes. place of rest and comfort and healing and wholeness and the presence of the Lord is now seen as a dividing line between righteousness or unrighteousness as opposed to a place for all of us to celebrate together right. what God accomplished and what Jesus is working in our lives. And that goes to the, speaks to the Acts passage as well. The Greeks have been invited in, and now he has defiled this place. The doors were shut immediately. The gospel is offered to all. Mm. And just like that, it should not be a division. It shouldn't, well, you're allowed, you're not. That's, mm. you know, it's, 
it's we are all invited and called into that right. and so that division that they're creating in that acts passage um, because right. Paul has done these things he's welcomed people in um, as, and, and strangely and enough and strangely enough even in that passage it's just like he was even it just even accused of doing it right and that's right. and that's we where saw every, him, well the, he was with he these people he was he was in all these things he's been hanging out with the impure and therefore right. he himself is impure Does sound and, like somebody else we know mm-hmm. Jesus, right? Jesus, right. right. He hung out with those sinners. So, so right, and so the, which makes the indictment in Hosea just all the more painful because the accusation is going against the religious leaders of the time that if they themselves have missed the whole point, then what what is the point if the priests can't do it and if these other you know, they're, the, the people are going to suffer along with their religious leaders because they are just not engaging in the right worship of God, which would include all of these things. We talk about justice, right. mercy, healing, forgiveness, compassion. Uh, they're not feeding the poor. They're engaging in idolatry and, you know, the, 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 the whoredom thing. It's, it's, it's a breaking of covenant relationship. It's, it's, it's cutting them all of these things that they do are contrary to what God's wanted them to do from the very beginning. Right. And so now there's going to be some complications with that. But but even so, we know that, that God is always in this process of this redemption cycle, that these difficult, harsh words are not the end of the story. That right. yes, this took place, and God still sent Jesus. Right. To redeem. To redeem, to make to make whole, to make right. Right. I think you look at, as you're looking at that chapter 4 in Hosea, you know, and you made that statement. You said that the this was being written to these religious leaders that they were, they can't even get it right. I think, you know, lying, murder, stealing, adultery. Mm-hmm. I think there are people that don't follow God that don't do those things. So my people who are called, set right. apart, like these are basic human like (laughs) like care for people like this is I mean right I mean that's even people who don't know God should know better right right how terrible is it that that the people people who do know God or should know God and claim to know God claim to know God 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 can't even get these things I mean that's pretty yeah that's saying something about how bad it was right and so, so and, and I wonder even, you know, Paul in the temple, um, you know, Paul is, is, has been preaching Jesus throughout uh, the ancient Near East. Uh, he's, he's been all over the place. Now he's back in the place where it's all, essentially where it all began, you know, in right. Jerusalem, in the city of God, in the city of David, who, who's the ancestor of Jesus, all of these things. And, and, and the the people that, again, should know better just didn't know better. And I wonder, um, if that was going on then, what does it mean for us today? You know, we who are so far removed from the time and the place, uh, um, we have access to the writings, obviously. If, If we're not engaged in reading these texts, if we're not engaged in being reminded of of the high call on our lives as humans, um, you know, do we find that there are people today who seem to be maybe more concerned with external appearances or external measures of righteousness and fail to see how God has invited everybody of every broken condition into his presence, uh, that Jesus actually came to us and met us there, that he becomes the true temple. He becomes the place where we find the forgiveness that we need. It's no longer centered on a place or a condition. It's the person of Jesus Christ that he is welcoming and inviting to all. And Paul experiences great violence in the midst of that. It's really strange that he needs to be rescued by the Roman oppressors, that here, here God uses the pagans to actually protect Paul Right. From the Jews who are trying to kill Paul, and it's this this weird. You know, God's God's in control. 
Right. You know, praise the Lord that the Romans were there, right? Which is strange. You know, they actually, what? They actually helped out in the situation. God is not, uh, you know, he's not a respecter of persons in the sense of everybody's invited, everybody's welcomed. Um, Even those who could be seen as enemies have a part to play in how God is, is, is working out his redemption. And so how much more as Christians should we be um, you know, responding in the same way, um, not generating animosity and anger, uh, but right. participating in rescue and healing and protection. Um, yeah. And it goes back to the same thing I said with Hosea that mm. if the people who proclaim to know God can treat people with decency, right? These people, these Romans, these wow. people who don't. Yet they have, like you said, they have a place, and I think that's a right. testament. Um, throughout New Testament, we see that that that's a, a testament, or a um, to use a different word, um, I, I don't know. It's right there. I can't get there. A witness, but a, maybe. Yes, yeah. a witness. But and I'm not sure if that's the word I'm looking for either. But that is that puts on display the ability and the power of God mm. to take a situation and to take circumstances and to use people and they may not even realize that mm. they are being used by God to accomplish his will yeah. and to accomplish what needs to happen and right. and you know sometimes sometimes you know maybe not in this situation I don't know but in 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 some moments I think when God chooses to use those people that is before they even realize that a transformation is going to take place. But I think sometimes that is the beginning of their hearts being softened and opened for I things to right. happen. And I think so, you're right. Well, I think, I think you're exactly right. And I think that full circles us back to Psalm 130. Um, you know, uh, there again in, in Old Testament and the Psalms, uh, if, if the Lord marked iniquities, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you um, so that God would be revered and waiting upon him, waiting upon his words of hope, waiting upon his steadfast love, all of those things. Um, yeah, God's got this. God has his plan. He's not going to be thwarted from his plan. And, right. and he is inviting us all to be active participants in it currently. Right. Yeah, um, good stuff. Well, uh, man, I certainly hope that was uh, as rich for y'all as it was for us. Um, I think, I, you know, it's just that moment of silence when we first finished reading, like, <laughs> what okay. to do? You know, it's like, <laughs> okay, well, where are we going to go? But right. um, thank you for taking the lead on that, Natalie. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. Um, and just want to uh, uh, remind everybody, I know that some of you who watch are not present in San Angelo, but we do have Chuck Clark who's coming, who's going to be with us this weekend, uh, starting on um, Saturday, and then he's preaching on, on Sunday, and we've got a lesson afterwards. So I hope that at the very least you'll tune in and watch the service on Sunday. And if you do have any concerns or questions, that uh, please feel free to call up to the church and ask those. And uh, whether we know the answers instantly or we might have to do some study ourselves and, and get to a place where we can have a discussion together, that's fine. Um, but uh, we do want you to know how much we care for you and are uh, praying for people in our community that have needs. And if you have some, please do uh, share those with us. But thank you, Natalie, for, for our time today. And would you like to close us in prayer? I would. Okay. I'd be happy to. But I also want to add, Chuck oh. Clark is also going to be doing a Sunday school hour. He's going to be sharing with That's our right. adults during the Sunday school hour um, at 915. So if you're going to be joining us for Sunday morning service, come on, on a Sunday little bit early, well. 915. Exactly. So. Absolutely. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word to us today. Thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy and the redemption that you do offer to us. Help us to be people who um, do wait on you and do seek you and do look to you. Help us to be people that see those around us and um, love one another and that we care for people and that we invite them in. Let us be people who are inviting to Christ rather than uh, putting up walls of division. And um, be with us as we go into the world and that we can be a light for you and pointing towards you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.